This is Ria. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. Little Hedgehog has done many things. She has gone on field trips, she has hosted parties, she has built a treehouse, or at least she observed BB do the work, but she's never celebrated her own birthday. At least, we have not been there to see it. It's time. Our story is called Little Hedgehog's Birthday Extravaganza. Take it away, Juniper. Remember, there are no pictures. You have to imagine them in your mind. You imagine them however you want. Okay, let's go! Mr. Hedgehog was enthusiastically typing the first draft of a non-fiction book about the famed explorer Hedgewig von Pricklethot when he heard a crumpling sound coming from the crack beneath his closed office door. He had been in a state of flow, and he did not love the interruption. Mr. Hedgehog stooped to grab the paper smoothed it out, scanned the page, and shook his head with a smile. He opened his office door. Little Hedgehog. Yes, Dad? Your birthday is not for ten months. Ten months and three nights, Mr. Hedgehog. His daughter's best friend called from down the hall. Mr. Hedgehog heard (laughs) giggling. Just trying to get a head start on brainstorming, Dad. Little Hedgehog, your birthday is now for 10 months and apparently three nights. I am not even thinking about it for another eight months. Okay, Dad. Understood, Mr. Hedgehog. Mr. Hedgehog closed the door and went back to work. Five months later, Mr. Hedgehog was less enthusiastically editing his book manuscript about Hedgewig von Prickletot crossing out entire sentences in red pen. What was I even trying to say here? When he heard the sound of an envelope skidding under the door of his closed office. Grateful for the break, he ambled over and picked it up. Inside, there were three pages with his daughter's barely legible scrawl, as well as highly legible notes here and there, jotted down by her best friend, B.B. It was a lengthy list of ideas for Little Hedgehog's birthday. Mr. Hedgehog stuffed the papers back into the envelope and cracked open his office door. Little Hedgehog, your birthday is not for another five months and three nights, Mr. Hedgehog. And three nights, Dad! I'm not even going to read this for another three months. Okay, Dad. Understood, Mr. Hedgehog. Three months later, Mr. Hedgehog was sitting at his desk, trying not to tear out his prickles as he attempted to incorporate some last-minute notes from his editor before his biography of Hedgewig von Prickletot was sent off to the printer. He said minor tweaks. Rewriting the entire first chapter is not a tweak when he heard a strange-sounding crow coming from behind his closed office door. Caw-caw. Caw-caw. Mr. Hedgehog considered ignoring it, but he knew from experience things would only get worse if he didn't deal with it. Caw-caw. Caw-caw. Little Hedgehog and BB, her best friend of all time, stood on the other side of the door, smiling prickle to prickle. Hello, Dad! Good tidings, Mr. Hedgehog. What's with the, uh... I'm crowing up fast, Dad! Little Hedgehog is indeed crowing up fast, Mr. Hedgehog. Caw, caw. We did the math, and according to your own admonishments... We can plan my birthday party now! Caw-caw! Mr. Hedgehog blinked. He, too, did some math and discovered they were correct. It was precisely two months and three nights before Little Hedgehog's birthday. All right, I'll play ball. (gasps) Oh, playing ball isn't on the list. Add it, BB. Certainly. Mr. Hedgehog watched in amusement as B.B. scribbled something on a clipboard. 
What's, uh, what's on the clipboard? BB smiled. Little Hedgehog's eyes seemed to double in size. She withdrew a music player from behind her prickles and pressed a button. We shall now present our ideas in no particular order. BB consulted her clipboard. Survivalist birthday excursion. A wild turkey will drop us in the middle of nowhere with nine items of our choosing and we must survive for a month. Doesn't it sound fun? That is not happening. Our next idea is to ride on the back of a crow 200 feet in the air, then leap off wearing leaf parachutes. Why do all these ideas involve jumping off birds, huh? How about spelunking, Mr. Hedgehog? We would like to journey to the center of the earth, or at least halfway. No. You're going to love this one, Dad. We want to swim with pink dolphins in the Amazon River. Aren't there also alligators in the Amazon? I am not certain, Mr. Hedgehog, although I know there are caimans, which are closely related and similarly dangerous. There are also piranhas, which could damper our time with the pink dolphins. Mr. Hedgehog peered at BB. Next, Little Hedgehog peeked at the list. <gasps> oh, this is a good one, Dad. BB and I want to sail around the world with nothing but pocketfuls of enthusiasm and also crickets. We can spend my birthday in the middle of the sea, miles from any land or assistance. Mr. Hedgehog couldn't help but chuckle. <laughs> no. Little Hedgehog and BB blinked. I really thought he'd go for that one, BB. Me too. We need some telepathy music. Indeed. Little Hedgehog pressed another button on the music player. The two tiny hedgehogs exchanged several meaningful looks. Mr. Hedgehog watched them, scratching his chin. At length, they shouted, Panda, Panda trampoline, trampoline party, party Dad. Mr. Hedgehog. Mr. Hedgehog was about to say no reflexively, but he stopped himself. What is a panda trampoline party exactly? Oh, Dad, it's only the most popular type of party there is. It was true. Panda trampoline parties were having something of a moment in that region of the Great Woods. No one quite knew how the pandas had arrived, nor did anyone care. Young creatures loved leaping from panda tummy to panda tummy, enjoying moss pizza and worm-flavored birthday cake, then heading home, delirious and exhausted. Once Little Hedgehog explained this, she said, So, Dad, what do you think? Can I have a panda trampoline party for my birthday? Can I please? Can I please, Dad? What say you, Mr. Hedgehog? Mr. Hedgehog took a moment to consider it. A party in which his tiny daughter and her friends bounced on the tummies of lazing pandas certainly sounded more reasonable than a predator-filled trip to the Amazon. The juxtaposition of these two wildly different images pushed him just enough to say, Okay. Yay! 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 The final yay came from Little Guy, Little Hedgehog's pet chameleon, who sat on her shoulder prickles, a fact Mr. Hedgehog did not notice until that very moment. Let the party planning commence! Indubitably. We shall travel to the Panda Trampoline Park immediately! Mr. Hedgehog peered at his tiny daughter. You're, you're going there right now? It's the middle of the night. So? Little Hedgehog, your dad has a point. Pandas are crepuscular creatures meaning they are most active at dawn and dusk. It is possible the Panda Trampoline Park is only open at those times. We shall travel to the Panda Trampoline Park at twilight. The following evening at twilight, Little Hedgehog and BB traipsed through the woods to the Panda Trampoline Park. It was early spring, and the air was warm beneath the lavender sky. When they arrived, they were met with a floppy-eared rabbit who sat behind a desk. Beyond the desk was a clearing in which pandas lolled on the ground, nibbling bamboo, apparently waiting for partygoers to arrive. Hello. Good evening. How can I help you? The rabbit said without looking up from her desk calendar. 
We'd like to schedule a party. A birthday party. A birthday party, I see. Uh, we are booked for the next two months and one day. That's perfect because my birthday is in two months and two days. That is strangely perfect. Your birthday, you say? The rabbit said, finally lifting her eyes to assess little hedgehog. Yes. Indeed. How interesting. We do not often have young animals scheduling their own parties. In fact, it is often a surprise. Do you dislike surprises, my dear? The rabbit gave little hedgehog a pitying look. In truth, little hedgehog loved surprises. It was possible she loved surprises more than any other creature in the forest. At least, she loved the idea of surprises, but she also loved ruining them. I have to know immediately. Several years back, Mr. Hedgehog attempted to surprise Little Hedgehog with a cricket cupcake birthday party, at which she and her friends would bake cupcakes together, then take rides on tortoises. But Little Hedgehog made conversation with so many creatures throughout her daily life that eventually she talked to a tortoise who spilled the beans. Well, spilled the crickets, I suppose you could say in this case. What's your life like? Do you go on adventures? Tell me about you. Me? You're, you're interested in me? Wow, um, that's a first. Well, uh, I I'm gonna be working a kid's birthday party next week. Can't remember who it's for. Some prickly mammal like yourself. It didn't take much more for Little Hedgehog to figure it out. Another year, BB attempted to surprise Little Hedgehog with an origami birthday party, with Mr. Hedgehog's approval, of course. We will fold origami frogs and hop them towards the prune-flavored birthday cake, Mr. Hedgehog. That sounds weird, but fine. But Little Hedgehog happened to corner Camille, a classmate known for being incapable of keeping secrets. So Camille, what are you up to this weekend? Doing anything fun? Um, this weekend? Um, I can't take the pressure. Baby's planning an origami birthday surprise party for you. <gasps> really? Oh no, I wasn't supposed to say that. And then there was the final time Mr. Hedgehog gave it a go. He planned a zip lining party and made sure to tell everyone to keep it quiet. But he failed to prepare for his daughter's new strategy as the party approached. Dad, I'm so excited for my waterfall jumping party. I've always wanted to leap off a waterfall and land on the back of an otter. What are you talking about? He did not notice Little Hedgehog crossing off an item on her notepad. She repeated this exercise every day for two weeks until she announced... Dad, you've made it clear I'm not having a parachute party, an underwater clown party, a giant squid expedition party, a farm party with lizard rides, or a mud puddle party, so I must be having a zip lighting party. He never figured out how she managed to do it. After that, Mr. Hedgehog, BB, and everyone else gave up on trying to surprise Little Hedgehog. Little Hedgehog and BB considered explaining all this to the floppy-eared rabbit working the desk at the Panda Trampoline Park, but they telepathically concluded it was not necessary. Instead, Little Hedgehog said, Do you have any party slots two months and two days from now? Preferably at twilight, rather than at dawn. The rabbit ran her paw across her desk calendar until she reached the desired date. You're in luck. We just had a cancellation for Twilight on that date. Apparently, the Mouse family, who originally booked it, decided to put all their resources towards living in a van for a year. Little Hedgehog and BB exchanged a look, then said, Yay! 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 The third yay came from Little Hedgehog, who had taken to filling in for Little Guy when he was not present to round out the yays. The rabbit took down some information. You can put it under the name Mr. Marvin Hedgehog. Little Hedgehog, your dad's name isn't Marvin. I know, BB, but it sounds more official this way. <laughs> 
All right, then. To reserve your booking, I'll need a jar full of celery leaves. Here you are. Thanks, Phoebe. You're on point. Always. With the party booked, it was time to make invitations. But Little Hedgehog didn't want to make plain old paper invitations. She wanted something unique. She and BB brainstormed. What about singing telegrams? My mom had an unfortunate incident involving singing telegrams and made me promise never to utilize them. Hmm. What if we shout the invitation from the treetops? That reminds me of a family story that has been passed down through eight generations. Tell me at once, BB. My great, 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 great aunt, Grimhilda, once notified an entire village of her intention to host a party without delivering a single invitation. Instead, she played her bagpipes at top volume in the village square until every single area hedgehog assembled. They were drawn to her not by the beauty of the bagpipes' mellifluous sound, but by the desire for her to cease playing. Once the crowd had gathered, Aunt Grimhilda set down her pipes and invited them to her party, which was effective and also softened their annoyance at her. At least, that's how my mom tells it. Practical, BB. But I don't know how to play bagpipes. Hmm. I know. We could have butterflies land on our invitees' heads and invite them. You, omnivorous small mammal, are invited to Little Hedgehog's birthday extravaganza. That's my butterfly voice, BB. <laughs> the two tiny hedgehogs attempted to enlist help from area butterflies to carry out this unique strategy, but it turned out that spring is not the best time to ask for favors. Kid, I've got to reach like 300 flowering bushes today alone. You think I got time to invite weasels to your party? Said a particularly gruff butterfly as he landed on a flower outside Little Hedgehog's burrow. I don't even think I'm inviting any weasels. There are none in my class. The butterfly flew away in silence, as if to drive home the fact that he simply did not have time for this. Little Hedgehog and BB settled on making invitations on paper that they then folded into airplanes. Over the course of the following week, our two favorite hedgehogs followed their classmates in an entirely unsinister way as they scampered home from school, pelted the airplanes at their heads, then watched from afar as the intended recipient unfolded the invitation. Ouch! Huh? What's this? Oh, an invitation to Little Hedgehog's birthday. Nice. This method worked flawlessly. Until B.B. let an airplane loose towards McGillis, a turtle who sat behind her in math class. In an unpredictable twist, the plane sailed through the night air, did a loop-de-loop, -loop, and landed directly in McGillis's eye. Ow! I can't see. Whoops. Whoops. Eventually, all the invitations were passed out. McGillis's eye was mostly healed, and it was time for the party. It was a warm night in late spring when Little Hedgehog, BB, Mr. Hedgehog, and Little Guy, who sat atop Mr. Hedgehog's shoulder prickles, arrived at the Panda Trampoline Park. Hello! Greetings. Hi. Uh, we're here to check in for my daughter's birthday party. The floppy-eared rabbit kept her eyes on her desk calendar. Yes, uh, Mr. Marvin Hedgehog, I've got you down right here. Mr. Hedgehog opened his mouth to protest that he was not, in fact, Marvin Hedgehog. But then he saw his daughter and her best friend giggling in his <laughs> periphery, and he let it drop. All jumpers will sign a waiver. The rabbit said, passing a clipboard across her desk. Mr. Hedgehog scanned it, his brow furrowing as his eyes traveled over phrases such as not responsible for loss of tail or paw. Eh, all right, he said, signing his name. 
Oh, and this is Mr. Stickney here to inform you about security. Security? Mr. Hedgehog asked. Security's very important, Mr. Marvin, said Mr. Stickney, a large skunk who appeared from behind a tree. Okay. You can't have a bunch of defenseless panda bears and small mammals such as your daughter just leaping joyfully out in the open. My team and I create a stink perimeter around the panda park here. We get that going three times a day, so your daughter and her guests will be safe as can be, sir. Oh, <laughs> okay, great. With security taken care of, the party guests streamed in. Welcome! Greetings. Happy birthday, little hedgehog. Soon, it was time to jump. Leaping from panda tummy to panda tummy turned out to be just as fun as little hedgehog had hoped. Whee! cried Boris, a lemur in Little Hedgehog's class. Whee! yelled Alarna, a short-beaked echidna who lived around the bend. Yay! said Little Guy, offering the only word he could that might express his glee at leaping on pandas. McGillis sailed by, grinning madly. I'm so glad I got my eye patch off yesterday. It's helpful to have depth perception when leaping on pandas. An innocent-looking cloud shaped like a glowworm drifted over the forest. Well, little hedgehog, there's a glowworm-shaped cloud above your party. This has to be a good sign. Yay! 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 But all of a sudden... Rain cascaded from the glowworm. It was not a sun shower. It was a torrential downpour. Oh no, little hedgehog, said Carrington, a sweet-natured gopher. What are we going to do? Is the party ruined? cried Pendleberry Winselton, a stern-faced lizard who was really a softie on the inside. At the party table, Mr. Hedgehog scanned the waiver he'd just signed to see if there was any language about rainstorms. But the paper quickly became drenched, and the letters ran together, so Mr. Hedgehog had no idea whether the party would be halted. For a few long moments, as the rain poured down in the middle of the forest, and the panda tummies became increasingly slippery, no one knew what to expect. Until BB piped up with a helpful fact about pandas. Pandas love the rain. Indeed, the pandas seemed delighted by the rain. They smiled lazily as the raindrops pattered their faces and the ground around them turned to mud. The floppy-eared rabbit made no move to stop the party, so little Hedgehog and her friends resumed jumping with more gusto than ever. Whee! Whee! Yay! After a while, a bell rang, indicating it was time for pizza and cake. Little Hedgehog and her friends slid down from the panda's tummies and waved goodnight. Bye, pandas. We love you. Farewell, pandas. The rain petered out, and the glowworm cloud drifted away. The dozen or so young animals sat down to eat at picnic tables, completely coated in mud beneath the starry sky. They ate snail pizza topped with the leaves of a fern. They enjoyed a prune-flavored cake with persimmon icing. Little Hedgehog was overjoyed. Her birthday was just as she'd imagined, just as she'd planned. But when she stood on her chair and said, Thank you everyone for coming to my party. I am so grateful to... BB held up a paw. Little Hedgehog, with Mr. Hedgehog's permission, I have planned a special surprise for you. <gasps> a surprise? For me? Mr. Hedgehog wheeled a tiny piano from behind a nearby panda. It had keys of many colors. The party guests were beside themselves. This is delightful. Why are the piano keys different colors? Little Hedgehog, under a veil of secrecy, I spent weeks training your pet chameleon to play the piano. <gasps> wow, BB! At BB's cue, Mr. Hedgehog plucked Little Guy from his shoulder prickles and set him, wide-eyed, 
at a diminutive stool before the instrument. Happy birthday, little hedgehog. We hope you enjoy this whimsical piano concert by your reptilian pet. Yay! Yay. Yay. And with that final yay, little guy began to play. For having practiced only a few weeks, he was rather good at piano. He had a light touch on the keys and a twinkle in his enormous eyes as he played. But that's not all. It's not even most of it. The real treat was that with every colorful new note his little claws played, little guy himself shifted hue. He was a cobalt blue, then a deep crimson, a gentle lavender, then a crisp mint green. It was mesmerizing to watch this tiny, living kaleidoscope of color and sound. Little Hedgehog watched with her paws clasped together in delight and stars dancing in her eyes. She and her party guests leapt to their feet to applaud as Little Guy played the final notes, humbly bowing his head as he did so. Mr. Stickney, the security skunk, sidled over to the party table. Uh, sorry to cut in here, Mr. Marvin. Uh, that was a cool trick, Chameleon. Just a warning on time, uh, the stink perimeter will be at 15% efficacy in about three minutes, sir. Mr. Stickney said, turning to Mr. Hedgehog. If you'd like my team to re-stink the area, we can do so for an additional fee of 23 snails. The party guests giggled. <laughs> uh, thank you, that won't be necessary. It was time to go. Little Hedgehog handed out goodie bags to her friends. Wow, thanks, Little Hedgehog. Are these crickets supposed to be pets or snacks? It's up to you. Isn't that fun? Then she, her dad, and BB scampered home beneath a crescent moon. It was turned so that it resembled the curve of a smile. Little Guy, exhausted from his performance, napped on Little Hedgehog's shoulder prickles. BB wheeled a wagon piled with presents. Thank you for making my birthday special, Little Hedgehog said as she skipped home. Of course, honey, my pleasure. It was a beautiful, perfect birthday night. I hope you loved this story. I have a feeling we'll get to see more of Little Hedgehog's birthday celebrations in the future. Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. My in-house tech director, Peter Kay, runs my website and puts my stories on the internet for all of you to enjoy. Thank you to my Little Stories premium subscribers who are making it possible for me to keep sharing my stories with children around the world. Thank you to Juniper for the super important reminder message at the beginning. And thank you to the many premium subscribers who supplied sound effects used in this story. Thank you to May, Hannah, Jeremiah, Maxwell, Lenora, Sanaya, Cecilia, Pearl, Lennon, Beckett, Eleanor, Jasper, Oscar, Malcolm, Esri, Zoe, Dylan, Leo, Ember, Titus, Sabina, Elias, Nova, Aisha, and Veer. And thank you, as always, for listening in.